what's God want of us while we're here? What's his purpose? Why did he leave you here? Well, he tells us here, doesn't he? The church is here to display three things to the world. In verse 10, the wisdom of God. And in verse 16, the power of the Spirit. And in verse 19, the love of the Savior. And if I'm willing to depend on his love and his power and his wisdom, then when people look at me like those clay pots in the days of Gideon that were broken and the light shone out, they realize, well, it wasn't you at all, was it? No, it was, it was God at work in you. Now, we're not talking sentiment here. We're talking about real life, aren't we? We had a young lady in our assembly. She was 14 years old. Her name was Rachel. Two months ago, she and her brother were standing, waiting for the bus. They had their backs to the wind. A man came hurtling down the road at 60 miles an hour and decided it was a good time to look for a tape that he had dropped on the floor of the car. And he came off the road just enough to take Rachel right out from under her brother's arm. And in one moment, she was in the presence of God. It's a good thing she had her bags packed, wasn't it? Good thing she was ready to go. Rachel's uh, grandfather went over to the house, and Rachel's father had been called home from work. The two of them went over to the accident site, and Rachel's body was still lying on the asphalt, covered by a blanket. And the two of them went over to the body and got down on their knees and pulled back the blanket, kissed her cheek. And then they began to pray. And they thanked God for the day that Rachel put her trust in the Lord Jesus and that they knew she was in heaven. And they prayed for the four policemen that were standing right there that their lives would never be the same. And they prayed for the driver that he'd be able to forgive himself but that more than that he'd seek forgiveness from God for all his sins and know what it would be to be saved and that uh, he'd meet Rachel in heaven someday. And they prayed for all the young people who would hear about this, whose lives would be touched by it. I tell you, Christian, it's the real stuff, isn't it? And I know that one of those policemen's wives called up and said, where do you go to church anyway? In fact, all four of those policemen were sitting there at the funeral, listening to the gospel. And I don't know how many will get saved, but I do know that a corn of wheat never fell into the ground and died, but abided alone. And there will be fruit for God's glory. And that's how the apostle concludes this little section. When we live like this and allow God's wisdom and the Spirit's power and the Lord's love to be manifested through our lives, that equals something. What does it equal when you add those three up? Well, verse 21, Unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end.